Hey there, it's Isto! Last time on Space Exploration, we made a lot of progress on the Astronomic and Energy Sciences, getting all the way to Tier 4, until we got to these two experiments, Star Probe Data and Asteroid Belt Probe Data. These two experiments are going to require an outpost around the orbit of the star, and also one from within an asteroid belt. And instead of shipping items back and forth with cargo rockets like we have been doing, we have a new option we are about to research. Finally, spaceships! So with that research, we now have access to spaceship console, spaceship flooring, spaceship wall, spaceship door, spaceship rocket engine, and spaceship tank. I also researched spaceship ion engine, spaceship ion tank, as well as spaceship docking clamps. So to make a spaceship, we need to put down some spaceship flooring, add some spaceship walls, we need some form of propulsion, right now we use rocket engines. And we need a way to store the fuel, so we'll use a rocket tank. Every spaceship needs a spaceship console, some form of power. And we'll need a way to deal with asteroids as we're flying around, so for right now that's going to be a laser turret. Oh, we can also put a door in here. Nice. So if we click on our spaceship console, we can check our current integrity. And this says we have a hull strength of 91 out of 300. Currently, I have not researched any spaceship integrity upgrades. This will allow us to make our spaceships bigger in the long run. So for right now, our very tiny ship is well within our limits, and we have a similar amount of container stress, which is four, if you haven't already guessed, containers. So if we add some containers and do another integrity check, that has gone up. So those are all the pieces required for a basic non-automated starship. Obviously we can make this one about three times bigger and make it look a little bit cooler. Another thing we can do is we can rename our ship from whatever random name it gave us to begin with, and we can call it the, oh, I don't know, the USS Zisto Prize. Wait a second. Back up. We had the Zisto Prize A. Zisto Prize B. Zisto Prize C, which makes this the USS Zisto Prize D. Space, the final, final, final frontier. Still, these are the voyages of the starship Zisto Prize D, whose ongoing mission is to shoot asteroids, apparently. Captain's Log, star date, approximately episode 19. Two minutes, 49 seconds. I have a spaceship again, and since I'm the one piloting it, that makes me, once again, a captain. And so, ergo, ipso facto, I can once again make a captain's log. So we now have a fully functional starship we can use to travel between our various outposts. We can go from our base in space down to the planet below, which we're going to do in a minute. We no longer need to take a cargo rocket anytime we need to go somewhere to update an outpost or to fix something that's broken. We are right up against the limit of our hull stress limit, but we're going to research some upgrades there presently. The only automation we've added to this guy is from a constant combinator, which is wired into the left side of the console, which is the input side. And this is just giving it a signal for how fast to go. Whatever number you give it here, it'll try to go that fast if it's able to. And we're also telling it which docking clamps to look for. So the numbers you set here and the direction they're facing, the blue one being the one you anchor to, and the yellow one being the one on your ship, has to match up with the numbers and the direction they're facing of the docking clamp on the ship and the one you want to anchor to. So, we're going to go down to the surface and do some upgrading real quick. Let's head down here, where we've been crafting some speed modules, rank 7. Let's just go ahead and grab all of them. Then back on the ship, all we have to do is scroll down here to destination and tell it we want to go to Nalvis, and it'll tell us how much fuel it's going to take. It's going to take 10 gigajoules of fuel, and we have way more than that, so let's be on our way. We're only leaving orbit, so this trip just takes a few seconds, and since I already put a docking clamp down on the surface, we automatically connect this one here. Same numbers, same configuration, so it automatically docks. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to upgrade the modules in our beacons. We're going to use this module inserter mod, which is going to automate the upgrading of modules. And since this mod pack has a lot of modules, this seems like a good idea. We're currently using wide area beacon. We want to tell it to put in speed module sevens. Check mark. That's it. We don't have enough to upgrade the whole base, so ideally we just want to pepper these around to the areas that are most important. So right here we're making rough data storage substrate. This is pretty important to do any kind of science, we need those computer chips. So let's go ahead and grab our upgrade guy. And boom, just like that, they're going twice as fast. We probably also want to upgrade the production of low density structures. We're using those all the time for all kinds of things. And we can also update the production of our rocket capsules and our cargo rocket parts. And then next, let's speed up some of our oil production here, which is going to several different parts of our base. Then when we're ready to leave, we just go back to the spaceship and we change the target from Nalvis to Nalvis Orbit. And launch. And since we have an anchor already, as soon as we get back... Boom! Right back to our parking spot. Another thing we can do quickly before we get to work on our next spaceships is we can upgrade all of our thermal radiators. I researched Thermal Radiator 2 as well as the different recipes involved with it. So we can head down here to our thermo fluid area. We can replace all of these thermal radiator 1s with thermal radiator 2s. They're twice as fast. We can also update the recipes. Currently we're doing the basic recipe which turns 50 thermofluid of the default temperature to 49 of the negative 10 C thermofluid. So we've got an efficient version which takes 500 thermofluid and produces 499 negative 10 C thermofluid and a incredibly inefficient one which takes 10 and turns it into 9. I don't know why you'd ever use this recipe. Don't ever use this recipe. It's terrible. For no reason should you ever, ever use this recipe. We're going to use the efficient one. Nice. So fast forward a little bit and I've built some infrastructure for our two missing science experiments. They're going to arrive via train here from this new train stop, get offloaded onto this belt and head up to this supercomputer where we'll make our final astronomic catalog. And once that's made, we'll be able to make our final tier four astronomic science pack. Similarly down here, our star probe data will get offloaded onto a belt, head over to the supercomputer where we'll make our final energy catalog, and then once that is made, we'll be able to make our final tier 4 energy science. Those both arrive via train, and those trains originate from our Nexus area, where they will get offloaded from these new shiny spaceships. I've currently researched five ranks of structural integrity, so our ships can get quite a bit bigger, but they're fundamentally made of the same pieces. This time we're using ion engines, which are bigger and more powerful. They use ion stream as fuel. The only downside, though, is that we can't take these down into the gravity well of a planet. We can't take off from a planet. We have to keep these in space. We're using a buffer chest to request the items we need to make at the outpost. So for our asteroid belt base, we've got four asteroid belt probes and four space probe rockets. We're also sending some meteor defense installation ammo just to be on the safe side. The data is going to get stored in here and then offloaded via belt once the ship comes back. And then from there, it gets loaded onto the train. So we want to automate our starships, and the goal is to make them behave more or less like trains. We want them to go somewhere, pick something up, and then come back and drop it off. The starship on the left is already all hooked up, all wired up, all ready to go. We just have to give it one extra signal for it to be on its way. The one on the right has all the different pieces in place, but not the wiring. So I can explain how it works as briefly and simply as possible. We still have this constant combinator here, which is giving it a target speed to shoot for, and it tells it what docking clamps to look for, what number, and which way it's facing. Then out here on the left, we've got a series of decider combinators. Each one of these is a condition we want to be met before we allow the starship to take off. So we want to make sure it has enough fuel to make the trip there and back, since it's not going to get a source of ion stream when it's out there. We've decided we want to load it up with four space probe rockets, and we also want it to have four asteroid belt probes. And then once it comes back, we don't want it to take off again until it has completely unloaded all of the asteroid belt probe data that we sent it out there to produce in the first place. So in order for it to know that it has these things or doesn't have these things, we got to wire up a lot of different inventories so that it can read the contents. So we'll start with these fuel tanks here. Whenever we wire any of these up, 
the, the default and really the only option is to read the content. So we just want to create a network of wires that connects all these things. Here's our buffer chest and we want to make sure when we, we get to the, uh, the next location that our requester chest gets set to request from buffer chests. So we got to hook up that buffer chest and then to stretch up here to these chests, we use the substation, which we can connect between those. We want to hook up these chests, which are going to hold the data. And then we're going to use these docking clamps, which allow you to pass a signal from one side to the other. So by putting the wire there, it allows me to connect a red wire to the other side. It'll pass the signal right through. We want to send that to the input side of these decider combinators. And also, since we're looking for an asteroid belt probe data number of zero, we want to make sure that the ship doesn't take off before this belt finishes unloading. It's only currently looking for the chests to be empty, so there might still be some on the belt that isn't empty yet. So to take care of that, we'll just hook up a wire to this belt, and we'll tell it to read belt contents and hold. So we want to check that this is wired up correctly. We can just set down a power pull, shift click it to remove the copper wiring and connect it with the same color wire we're using to read all the other signals from all the different inventories. And we can see it's reading 59,000 ion stream and 100 ammo and four of the space probe and four of the satellite. So whenever the condition for one of these decider combinators is met, it's going to output a green signal. And then here we've got another decider combinator and it's looking for four green signals. You could use a different signal than green, by the way. I just picked that by random. Basically, it's a default signal used pretty commonly in Factorio. For however many conditions you have for your ship to take off, you need to have this number be the same. So we've got four conditions. We need fuel. We need these two items. And we need this item to be zero. We've got four conditions, so it's looking for a green signal equals four. And when it meets this condition, it's going to output everything it's getting from the input. So we need to hook up the outputs of these four signals to the input of that decider combinator. You can see there it's inputting signals and it's currently only outputting green because that's the only signals it's receiving. So we're going to give it one extra set of signals from this constant combinator. And this constant combinator is going to tell it where it needs to go, as well as the command, which I haven't put in here yet, because it'll take off as soon as we wire it up. It's going to give it the command to launch, which is this signal right here. Each location in space exploration has its own icon. So we've got star, planet, planet orbit, moon, moon orbit, asteroid belt, asteroid field. There's even anomaly, which I haven't encountered any of that yet. That's probably endgame stuff. And if we go to our solar system map and we click on a place we would like to go, like for instance, we're going to be going with this ship to Kaleidos Asteroid Belt 1. You'll see there's an automation signal here listed for the asteroid belt. So we need asteroid belt and we need to give it the number 251. So that's why right here I've set the number 251 for asteroid belt. That's the signal that's going to tell it where to go. So what we need to do is we need to connect this up to the outputs of these green signals. And now we can see that the input signal is for green and that asteroid belt. And it's now outputting the asteroid belt. So we're going to pass this signal forward through the clamp again. But since we don't want our signals to be overlapping and causing loops and stuff, just to be safe, we're going to use a green wire to go from outside the ship to inside the ship from this output to the input of the spaceship console. And that's all it takes to automate a basic spaceship. So let's make sure we're inside the spaceship before I add this one extra signal. It's going to pass through because all these are met. It will be passing through all the way through to the input of the console. The signal to automatically launch when all the signals are present. Boom! Okay, we're in space. Cool. Let's take a look at our itinerary. Looks like it's going to take about two minutes to get there. It is quite a bit farther than just leaving orbit to go back down to the surface, but we're also using six of these beefy ion engines, which are quite a bit faster. I think we're going like around triple the speed or a little more than that smaller ship we made, the USS Zisto Prize D. 
So once we arrive at our destination, the ship stops dead. There's no clamps on the other side, so we have to give it a place to anchor and then build an anchor so it knows where to anchor in the future. If we look at the map, we do want to be close to methane ice. We're going to need that for the biological sciences coming up. And it looks like this is the biggest ore patch nearby, so we will just anchor the ship here. So here we have a finished outpost. It's actually extremely simple. We've got some solar panels powering the thing, and since we're in space, they are always on. We don't need any accumulators. We've got some meter defense installations here. Got some roboports, which we are going to leave behind a skeleton crew, 50 construction robots, and 50 logistics robots. They are going to add some ammo there to defend us from asteroids, and they're also going to add the... Asteroid Belt Probe and the Space Probe Rocket to this guy. And he is already creating the first rocket. As soon as that is built, it'll add the Space Probe, it'll launch it, and then it'll spit out some science data. There we go, our first space probe has been launched, and we've got asteroid belt probe data, which is getting loaded into our spaceship. And we have a similar logic for the signals that'll tell it when it's okay to launch back to our main base. We want to have almost 4,000 of the space probe data in these containers. And the reason we're not looking for exactly 4,000 is because they're going to put some of those 4,000 onto the belt there, so it'll never be at exactly 4,000. We're looking forward to have used up all the space probe rockets and all of the asteroid belt probes. And then we've given it location data, the planet orbit 216, which is our Nalvis space base. And when we're ready to leave and it's got all the conditions met, we can give it the signal to launch the spaceship. So there goes the last probe, and there's the last of the data we're looking for. I'm going to get in the ship just to make sure we're inside when it gets all the signals, so we don't get left behind. There's the signal to launch. So since we only have three conditions here, this guy's only looking for three green signals. Once it has it, it'll pass it out. As you can see, it's only getting inputs now. It's not passing anything through because there's only two green signals. Once it gets the 3900 asteroid belt probe data's in those containers, it's reading those numbers, it'll get the third green signal, it'll pass through the signal to launch, and where to go, and we will be off. And there goes the last of it, and right away, ba-boom, back in space, on our way back to our space base. And we're home! The ship docked automatically because we told it what clamp to look for. The asteroid belt probe data is getting unloaded onto the belt, and it'll get loaded onto that train there and then get sent down to the science area. Robots are going to add more probes and rockets into the buffer chest. Those are getting made down here, by the way. They take all this stuff, some uranium fuel cells and aero frame bulkhead and other odds and ends. Oh, oh and there it goes. It already took off to, to head back to generate more data. So now it's getting loaded onto the train, which will take, looks like, about five trips for this thing to fill up fully. But just to get some science rolling, let's go ahead and send it off to generate some science. Oh, hang on a second. I think I'm almost as... Nope, never mind. No, I'm not as fast as the train. Never mind. So the science is on the belt. It's going to get turned into the catalog right here. There it goes. Then it's going to get sent over here to the machine to make Atomic Science Pack 4. Boom! On the belt. We did it. We can now also update to the fourth and final blue juice box recipe. Check mark! So the star probe data and our outpost around the star is gonna work just like the asteroid belt probe data, except for a few minor changes. We've got a different location. We're going to the star instead of an asteroid belt. We need star probes instead of asteroid belt probes, and we're looking for a count of zero star probe data for the ship to be able to take off. All right, let's go ahead and give this guy the signal to launch. And away we go. And once we get this outpost some robots, they will add the ammo to the requester chest for our meteor defense.
So there's the first of four star probes, and it's spitting out the star probe data. We want to make sure we get inside the ship so we don't get stranded out here. Now we just wait for it to fill up, and we'll be on our way. And we're back with the star probe data. And just to get the science going, we'll go ahead and send the train on its way as soon as the ship has fully unloaded. So the space probe data goes on about, it goes into the machine, it makes the extended energy catalog, which gets loaded over here to make the fourth energy science. And we can also update to the fourth energy juice box. That's a check mark. So after all that, we finally have some tier four astronomic and energy science packs ready to go. Let's send them over. Let's do some research. Dancing. Uh oh. It's going right for us. You got spaceship, shield projector, worker robot speed nine, energy shield, energy beaming, efficiency module five six seven, cryo gun. So, with astronomic and energy sciences done, it's time to move on to the next target, which is going to be biological science. In order to do biological science, we've got to go after the only basic resource we don't have yet, Vitamelange. Any planet or moon that has Vitamelange is also going to have a significant biter presence, as well as the fact that any meteors that manage to hit the ground are not just going to damage things, they're going to spawn more biters. So wherever we go, we're going to have to take some extreme measures and exterminate I mean evict all the aliens from our target and if we're gonna do that we may as well make a bigger ship I present to you the USS Zisto Prize E 